you're new to my channel, I'm Jess and I love to talk about live action roleplay on YouTube. Before I get started, I'm planning on doing a Q&A once I hit 500 subscribers and looking at the numbers right now, I'm edging closer and closer by the day. So if you have a question about LARP or about me or about something in general that I hope I can answer, um, no guarantee and no promises. Feel free to put a question in the comment section below or to drop me on email. The email address is in the description box. Now, on to the real reason you're here. Costumes. Now, we all make mistakes, especially when it comes to our first LARP costumes. Don't even ask me about mine, it was terrible. Lots of people will have different opinions about what is appropriate to wear to LARP, but that's not actually what this video is about. I personally don't care whether your costume is high quality, low quality, cosplay quality, or historically accurate. My priority when it comes to your costume will not only be for it to enhance your event, but also to make your life easier. So keeping that in mind, here are my top five mistakes that you need to avoid when it comes to your LARP costumes. It doesn't matter if your LARP is a one-off or if you're going to be attending them week after week. Your costume needs to be able to be washed. No matter what genre you play, your costume is going to go through a gauntlet. I'm talking about sweat, I'm talking about grass stains, I'm talking about tears from you know running through brambles. Even if you're indoors, it's going to be warm, you're going to be moving around and eventually your costume is just gonna get completely mucky. So if you're not planning on throwing your costume away immediately after an event, it's just good practice to wash it. Now this may sound like I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but trust me, some people don't and it's just gross. If you're buying it, then it should brilliantly come with washing instructions. On kit that's made by LARP kit manufacturers, make sure you do read these carefully because a lot of them are hand dyed and you may find that if you wash them with other pieces of clothing that uh, some of your clothes may turn a beautiful shade of blue when you didn't really intend for them to be that way at all. Please learn from my mistakes. If your kit is more custom made, then do your research. Make sure you know exactly how to keep it clean. Check what kind of fabrics it's made from and what their washing requirements are. And that also includes for if you're making it yourself. If it's too difficult to find out what the washing instructions are, then you maybe need to reconsider what fabric you're using. The smell of old sweat is rarely a good thing at a LARP event. You don't want people backing away from you just because of a bad odor. Construction is key. It's all well and good having beautiful art kit, but if it's going to fall apart on you after an event, or even worse, halfway through an event, then it's going to ruin the whole experience for you. Make sure your LARP kit is well sewn together. If you buy from a LARP manufacturer, then it's going to have some form of guarantee with it. In my experience, they all take really great pride in their work. Make sure all of your accessories are sewn on or tied on well onto your costume. You don't want to be running through the woods and then have all of your beautiful little charms and beads just fall off into the undergrowth. And if you're wearing a wig, make sure it's on securely. Asma has an amazing video on their channel about how to wear a wig properly. I'll link it in the description box below. Make sure to check that your scabbards and weapon holders are not too loose and that way your weapons won't fall out. Your ideal scenario is that if you're fleeing away from a fight that's too dangerous, by the time you stop, you still have everything with you. Now, it seems really obvious, but make sure you can go to the toilet in your costume. Now, I can hear you already. Well, duh, Jess. Way to tell us how to suck eggs. Well, you say that now, but you'd be surprised how many people I find going to the toilets at a LARP event and having to strip off layers after layers after layers just to get in through the door. Toilets, especially cubicles or porta can be really hard to get into if you're wearing something cumbersome. Too often have I opened a toilet door and then had to find myself maneuvering a quiver through the door frame. So when you're looking at that amazing dress with the giant skirt, that really awesome back scabbard, or pretty much just any form of like giant pieces of armor, think about how you're going to make this work. Great kit is always a thumbs up from me, but do make your life easier. Ideally, you need to be able to get into your costume by yourself, especially if you're attending events alone. I will actually be talking more about attending LARP events alone in my next video, so please subscribe if you want to watch that as well. Okay, let's be frank, we all love those costumes with the giant wings and the amazing tails and those giant, overdramatic anime style swords. However, nobody wants their eye poked out by one. So when you are manufacturing your big and beautiful garments, do keep in mind about how it's going to affect the people around you. Are you at risk of putting someone's eye out? Are you at risk of hitting them in, you know, sensitive places? 
It happens far more often than you might expect. So when you're putting it together, just keep an eye on those measurements. Make sure that whatever you're making isn't going to be eye height or, you know, groin height. Okay, so personally, I have absolutely no issues if you show up to a LARP cosplay. What I do care about is, is that cosplay costume going to protect you from the elements? Is your costume going to be comfortable after it's been out all day in the rain and the wind? Because that's the reality of outside LARPs if you're not blessed with living in a warm and comfortable climate. If you attend a LARP in a thin shirt and a barely there cloak, and it tips it down, you are not going to only find yourself wet and cold, but you're also going to find yourself at the risk of getting ill. So make sure whatever co your costume is, that it's made out of materials that are going to keep you safe and warm. I have mentioned in a few of my previous videos that materials are key when you're considering making a LARP costume. Make sure you have a waterproof outer layer in case of rain, and make sure that your costume is going to keep you warm or cool, depending on your local climate where you're LARPing. Comfortable LARPers are happy LARPers, and trust me, nobody wants you to have a bad time at your event. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss out on more LARP 101s. Please make sure you are staying happy and healthy. I really do mean it this time because uh, just a small update in my personal life, I have just been diagnosed with COVID-19. So please, please, please make sure you are staying safe and healthy. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you on the battlefield soon.